Kapo? I chose this picture naman para good vibes. Kasi heavy yung topic eh. And I'm grateful to Sir Becky for his role before me. Kasi medyo na kuha na yung much of the uh, points that I need to really convince you about my topic. Uh, sa totoo lang, I'm really happy to be with you especially when I learned that there is a good number of young people who are here. We ask the young people to please rise. Let's recognize our present future generation. Salamat, salamat. I'm very hopeful with your presence. And I'm also grateful kahapon ang prayer natin was made by a civil servant, public servant, then uh, merong NGO, merong sa private sector, and yata, then religious, no? And if I'm not mistaken, each one of them asked for forgiveness in the prayer. And I was struck with that. Because even listening now to the, the presentation before me, we need to acknowledge our generation somehow failed in a lot of ways. And we need to really take responsibility as well. And really ask for forgiveness not only from the young generation, or the generation yet to come, but from the rest of God's creation that we have abused. So, nagustuhan ko itong thing din natin, but yung binigay sa akin is to develop on divestment from goal. So you understand na pinagaan ni Sir yung trabaho ko kasi after listening to him, I hope you will be all out 100% support for this campaign. So, we, we have been aware, pinakita yan na kanina, itong lahat-lahat na to na nangyayari sa ating bansa at sa buong mundo. We are not ignorant. We experience it, most of us at least, firsthand, how it means to be in a country that is very vulnerable to climate change, to climate emergency. So ito lahat, nakikita na natin na nangyayari. Kaya it's very clear na we are in a climate emergency. Maganda na yung image really, Greta. The house is on fire. Ang gusto niya, dapat hindi na business as usual. So, nung nakita ko yung team natin, paradigm, race shift, heating nature, sabi ko baka yung break na dito yun, in a state of climate emergency, it's urgent that we shift to rate. RE, renewable energy. Tama ba? No more coal, please. Para na yung appeal natin. And let's go for renewable energy. Sa last zona ng ating mahal na Pangulo, sabi niya, fast track the development of renewable energy sources and reduce dependence on the traditional energy sources such as coal. 
Very clear yan. And yet, mag-anniversary na, I still have to see the political will and the concrete transition plan, especially from the Department of Energy, Department of Environment and Natural Resources, na mangyari ito. Kaya what we did in our group, we really went to dialogue with Secretary Simato as a starting point. And honestly, I'm very happy that he admitted na marami pang hindi nagawa at kailangan talaga na masara na sana ang ibang mga coal plants kasi talaga ang poisonous sa communities around. Na nag-irap ang Taal Volcano, nag-issue ng statement na mag-ingat tayo sa volcanic ash. But you know that there are communities around the coal-fired power plants in the country who are living every day with under the threat and have been suffering from the ash from the coal fire power plant. No? Kaya, sabi ko talaga, we have to hit nature, we have to make a paradigm shift and really embrace the need to, to transition to renewable energy. At kailangan din natin ang tinatawag ni Pope Francis sa Laudato Si, ecological conversion. And concretely, to really move away from just the me, which can also include my just my faculty, my interest group, and move to the perspective of the way, the we. To understand this, ecological conversion that is moving from we to we, let me share this story of Pope Francis. Sabi niya, a priest that approached him and gave him a test. Tinanong siya, what is the contrary of the I, the opposite of the me? And he said, I fell into the trap. And I answered him, you. Opposite ng I is you. And then he told me, no. The contrary of all individualism, both of the I and of you, is us. The opposite is us. The notion of we, us, is at the heart of what Pope Francis calls mysticism of encounter. It requires that we live the spirituality of the we, the us spirituality. Tapos yung itong we, hindi lang itong we na tayo against the others. But we, all of us together, and we should include the rest of God's creation as well. Because we are part of nature. As our speaker earlier said, we are not above or below, but we are part of this together. And in fact, we are trusted by, entrusted by God with the rest of creation as its steward. And we have to be accountable to God what we do with this. So, ang, ang spirituality of the we really highlights inter interrelatedness and interdependence. At nakita din natin yung illustration kanina, no, na talagang whatever we do here has repercussions even if across the globe. Yung melting ng ice sa kabila will affect si, si rice dito sa atin rise and sea level. So, yun, interrelatedness. Kaya, nabanggit na rin ni Sir yung pangalan ni Greta. Sabi ko, she is in a better and more effective uh, way, she has a better and more effective way to address the emergency that we are in to convince us to do, to start acting with urgency. So, let's listen to her. How dare you! You have stolen my dreams and my childhood with your empty words. My message is that we'll be watching. 
Martinho. But 
it's not coming yet. As we look, as we make an inventory of the situation in our country. And so what can we do? There are many things. This was already pointed out to you. One point centigrade already, nag-increase na yung ating ano. So we have experienced the hottest summers. And we are supposed to keep it 1.5 degrees centigrade by 2030. But if we don't do something, we, I could, we hardly could not reach that. And we, the effect of this rise already is this. And ito yung actual na statistics ng sinabi ni Sir Kanina. With the extreme heat of 1.5 0.5 degrees centigrade, 14% yung ma, ma, ano, ma capture. Tapos, pag 2, yung Paris Agreement, it's twice, three times worse than 1.5. Ang sea level rise, na nakita niya kanina, and all these other uh, indicators. No? So I will just uh, skip this. Keeping warming a half degree less, kind of half degree less, would give us a greater chance for survival for more vulnerable communities and species. Kasi hindi lang tayo affected. We have to really be more sensitive that there are other creatures of the Lord under the sea, the marine life, in the forest. In our, in our habitat, not because of the heat, the global warming na mamatay. And we are responsible also. Limiting the temperature rise to 1.5 degrees centigrade entails an unprecedented transition away from carbon intensive industries and practices. And it was very clearly pointed out as well earlier. With the reduction of the global emissions by 2030 should be 45%. In particular, the use of coal must be reduced by 78% from 2010, 2010 levels. And by 2030, it should be by 78% reduced, no? And year zero by 2050. Coal makes up 40% of the global fossil fuel emissions. That's why we are singling out coal because 40% is it. Ang laki talaga ng matik o ma-address yan. It's the, big, the biggest single source of carbon emissions. So, are we in the right track? Are, are, are we on track here in the Philippines with this Goal because na pirmaman ang ating ano, country na mag-contribute tayo to, to this effort. Ito sana yung ano, ang laki ng ano. At the moment, it's, there, are, there is 579 gigawatt of new coal fire power projects in the global pipeline. So the, you know, the whole world and there is an increase of 29% to the global installed capacity of 2026 gigawatts. So, um, nasana tayo na vulnerable, dapat we should be in the forefront to promote this, pero ang nangyayari, we don't see that much happening. Although there are already efforts from groups individuals and groups and organizations, but sad to say, not much from those who are supposed to be leading us. So, tingnan natin, since 2010, in the 10 year span, 16 new coal plants started operations, adding over 4.4 gigawatts of coal capacity. Imagine. At the moment, there are 25 operating coal plants and 28 more in the pipeline sa ating DOE. Ikong talagang sabutin nila 
ng Department of Energy yung marching order ng ating Pangulo. Lapag itong naka, nasa pipeline ng 28, huwag na yan. Kahit yung sa Atimunan, for example, where San Miguel is funding it, at sa PPI Bank ang nagpa-fund, tapos sana hindi na ipatuloy kasi yung mga tao doon ayaw talaga. Kahit yung simbahan doon, ayaw din. But they are still continuing it. There are 186 coal mining projects in the country. So, imagine yung increase in the pipeline kung ipatuloy yun, 130% increase sa 2019 national installed capacity ang laki ng i-increase nun. So yun ang sinasabi natin na instead tayo yung manguna na huwag na patuloy pa rin. Ayaw nila makinig. Kaya ano pa dapat ang gawin natin? Globally, among the 60 countries that are still under coal expansion, patuloy pa rin ang pag-expand ng coal fired power plants. Ang Philippines is number 9 out of 60. Nasa top 10 tayo. So dapat, baliktad sana. We should be in the forefront to precisely stop this already. Kaya sinasabi natin sa ating pag-aaral, ang financial institutions like the banks play a key role in the continued proliferation of coal and other fossil fuels. Money from banks funding coal essentially serve as coal's lifeline. Kung wala magpapand, wala rin na-construct na coal plant. That's the logic, no? So from 2017 to the third quarter of 2019 last year, 13 local banks channeled 6 billion 302 million 824,313 US dollars which is 319 billion pesos more or less to the coal industry. That's how much that was spent from 2017. Of the 13 banks that are funding in the country 54.67% galing sa BDO and BPI. More than half of the total of the financial support to the country's coal expansion. The others, and dyan sa baba, no? China Banking Corporation, Reserve Commercial Banking, Security Bank, Bank of Commerce, PNP, Metro Bank, Land Bank, Union Bank, UCCP, S West Philippine Bank of Communication. Pero yung top two talaga, BDO and BDI. Banks financing coal are not only funding the climate crisis, they are also enabling the continued suffering of coal-affected communities. So may moral aspect yan. May economic as well. Kasi ito yung economic side. They are exposing themselves to the risk of stranded assets. Sa limbawa, kung magpatuloy yung mag-oppose mag, mag, mag yung mga tao sa atimunan, ang laki na lang nag-invest doon ng bank. Paano nila ma-recover yun? Kung hindi patuloy. So, stranded assets or there are already existing coal plants, sabi nga ni Sir Camina, they should be phased out na, phased down and phased out. So, dapat hindi na mag-invest pa ako kasi nga, that's the way to go na, i-phase out eh. 90 power supply agreements, many of them coal, were denied by the Supreme Court in May 2019 for not undergoing the competitive selection process. Buti na lang. 
at na nanalo kasi kinasuhan talaga ng mga kasama natin kasi otherwise until now patuloy pa rin ang ating electricity na gagaling sa dirty coal patuloy pa rin hanggang ngayon na impacto pero at least nagbawasan walang bago kasi ito yung sinasabi natin since 2018 no new coal fired power plant has entered construction in the Philippines resulting in the delay or cancellation of as much as 4,054 megawatts of coal power. So that is a saving from carbon emission. Malaking bagay na yan. No? At salamat sa ating mga kasamahan na talagang nagpo-prosecure na i-prevent yun na mangyari. Thanks to the strong resistance of communities across the Philippines. And tayo lahat dito, I hope, after this third Philippine uh, Environment Summit, sasama talaga, all out, 100%, to really stop from stop opening the opening of more coal-fired power plants. And in this context, the Philippine banks must have concrete plans to phase out coal from their portfolio in the time required by today's climate crisis. Hindi pwede kung kailan lang. Kasi climate emergency na eh. We don't have the luxury. We have to really, as we heard in the previous speaker, very clear yung emergency. Kaya kailangan talaga sila mag-act. Kahit sa dialogue namin, they were saying we're doing something, 50-50 na, blah, 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 blah. Pero, at bottom line, kailan mangyari yun? Na hindi ito na talaga. They must have strict policies restricting coal finance, channeling the funds they divest from coal into clean and affordable renewable energy for all Filipinos. Is divestment from coal possible? Anong sagot natin? Yes! At dapat sinulang na talaga natin ang mga concretong steps para ma-attain natin ito. Sa simula, first time in my life, bilang bishop, mag-attain ako ng shape steps, stakeholders, General Assembly ng mga bangko dito doon sa Makati. Uninvited. Kasi open naman dapat yan sa public. And in the open forum, on behalf of all of us, I spoke and invite them to really give us their timeline when they start moving their funds from dirty coal to renewable energy. We, we attended DPI general stakeholders last year, as well as China Bank. At ang nakaka-ano doon kasi sa among the shareholders, it's not even being asked where their profit is coming from. In what means do they, uh, they are earning. Kasi, klaro naman, ang laki ng kita. At tuwang-tuwa ang mga shareholders na malaki ang shares nila. But, no one dare to ask whether kaya ba nilang tanggapin na some of the profits came from industries that also kill or make people sick around such coal by power plants. Kaya, ito yung ating crusade ngayon sa divestment. Possible siya Sinasabi natin, kasi the European Investment Bank committed to phase out its multi-bite billion euro financing for oil, coal, and gas after next year. Ang AXA, it's a French insurer, set the benchmark for best climate policies with zero coal tolerance. Thus, expecting about 400 coal-exposed companies in its finance portfolio and with time-bound plans to phase out its coal exposure. So, meron na talaga ng nag-decide, no? Ito nga, ang sabi ng Sol sa Sona, very clear ng ating Pangulo. We recognize the urgent need 
to ensure the sustainability and availability of resources and development of alternative ones. In this regard, I trust, may pangalanan talaga, the Secretary Kusi shall fast track also the development of renewable energy sources and to reduce dependence on traditional energy sources such as coal. Sabi nga kanina ni Sir, dapat hindi lang tayo maghintay sa kanila. Kasi tayo lahat affected dito eh. Pag hindi sila bumalaw, dapat tayo magtulong-tulungan at gagalaw para rin sila gagalaw sama-sama tayo. Kasi we are all in this together. Ang renewable energy potential ng ating country is 250 megawatts with renewable energy prices continuously going down. Sabi nga ni Pope Francis, at dapat ito ang ating nakonsensya naman yung mga companies no? at mga banks. Both everyday experience and scientific research show that the gravest effects of all attacks on the environment are suffered by the poorest. Laudato si number 48. So, dapat na sa isip natin at puso palagi yan. Number 165, sabi ni Pope sa Laudato Si, at ito yung aking tinitindigan, panilindigan, as Bishop of San Carlos, when we oppose the proposed full fire power plant of San Miguel Corporation in San Carlos City. The, the Holy Father says, We know the technology based on the use of highly polluting fossil fuels, especially coal, but also oil and a lesser degree gas, needs to be progressively replaced without delay. Progressively replaced without delay. Kaya natuwa rin ako sa sinabi ni Sir, very clear sa kanya yun, na dapat ganun talaga ang end point nun. Walang compromise. Kaya kami sa CBCP last July, last year, issued again another pastoral letter, an urgent call for ecological conversion, hope in the face of climate emergency. At isa sa mga action plans doon, number eight, do not allow the financial resources of our Catholic institutions to be invested in favor of coal-fired power plants, mining companies, and other destructive, extractive projects, divestment from such investment portfolios must be encouraged. So, merong direct divestment at may indirect divestment. Ang direct divestment, ito yun. Uh, hindi naman ka agad sabihin yung ano na mag-withdraw ka agad doon. So, sa, First of all, susunat tayo sa kanila. We will state our, that we are aware of the climate crisis, that we have a policy na our money should not be spent on anything that is against our principles. Kasi otherwise, ang integrity natin makompromise. So first, may notice. Imagine kung hindi lang isa, hindi lang si Bishop Jerry yung susunat sa kanila. Eh kung ang mga dioceses, Tayo lahat, private and public uh, servants, susulat sa kanila na we don't want our money to be used on dirty coal. I'm sure they will act. Ang indirect divestment, ito yung mga sinasabi na natin kanina. Yung switching your energy source from fossil fuel to renewable energy, reducing energy consumption, putting off the lights, then uh, pagbili ng bagong brand ng mga appliances na energy efficient, uh, being more careful with our use of water, reducing purchase and consumption of products, still na sinabi din kanina, reusing and recycling, riding in public transportation, riding in non-motorized transport like taking the bicycle or just walk, like here, no? We just walk to the convention kasi marami na yung iba natin tinatarahan. Carpooling, improving the ventilation at home or at work, wearing attire most of the home for the weather, replanting and growing, growing your own food, 
uh, using your own food and water containers. Yung announce announce ni Sister Kanina sana, reusable utensils, no? Using your own box with purchasing goods. Sa San Carlos City, matagal na kami no plastic. No? They're using lips. And pag pumunta ka taga ng restaurant at may sabaw kang bibilhin, hindi pwede ilagay yung in-order mo sa plastic. Dapat magdala ng container of your own kasi bawal ang plastic. No? Matagal na yan. And zero waste management. Ang aming bago ng price sa San Carlos is green is uh, where green is go. No? So, nasa development plan talaga ng city yan. At full of paper na sa Galipuok Award, ang uh, most livable city. Marami ng awards. Nice. One of the top 100 tourist destinations na sustainable ang San Carlos City. Model sustainable city, etc. Meron pang Orchid Award dahil sa sa no smoking policy in public at saka yung marine sanctuary protection. All of a sudden, ang LGO namin nag-endorse na patayuan ng coal-fired power plant sa San Carlos City. Hindi ko maunawaan. I cannot understand. So, ito yung number 7 na action plan ng City City. Push for an immediate transition to safe, clean, and affordable energy, ensuring just and fair transition to renewable energy sources and reject coal solutions. Support the use of solar power in our homes and institutions, dioceses, churches, schools, and seminaries. Promote, advocate, and invest in renewable energy, solar, hydro, wind, and geothermal power. Join the campaign to immediately phase out coal-fired power plants and all other plants dependent on fossil fuel, including coal mining. Yun ang boses ng ating mga kaupiskuhan sa Pilipinas. No? So kailangan natin talaga isupport lang yun. Kami sa apat na dioceses in Negros Island, the Diocese of Cabangkalan, San Carlos, Bacolod, and Lumaguete, through region of Dato City, Philippines, we responded to the call for climate action in Negros. Para sabihin namin na irrelevant magkaroon ng 300 megawatt na coal-fired power plant sa San Carlos City, we want to offer an alternative kasi we believe that the best protest is to act. So ang ginawa, inaral through, ano, ano yun? Drone, no, paano pinastadihan, ilang ang mga rooftops within our diocese na pwede maglagyan ng solar, for example. So, ito yung very conservative estimate. For Pakulot Diocese, almost 99,000 kilowatt. Nam sa Kabangkalan, 46,000. Sa San Carlos, sa amin, 38,000. And sa Dumaguete, 67,000 kilowatt. So, 259 yung total. So, malapit sa 300. And then there are other key players. Hindi lang naman ang diocese, ang apat na dioceses. There are other groups, like ang group sa ABC, who are also making alternative plans to, be, to keep Negros coal-free and a hub for renewable energy. Kaya, sabi namin, it's possible. Rooftop solar is the future as far as Negros is concerned. Ito yung ma-save natin ng mga emissions sa CO2. Kung, kung mag-execute itong plan, and that would earn kung may kung ano mo kung carbon trading no this amount of carbon dioxide that we are able to to save or spare from being emitted it will have that ano no in, in, in instead kung magpatuloy yung 300 megawatt coal fired power plant yan ang metric tons ilang millions na metric tons ng CO2 ang um, mag-contribute sa atin. Uh, 
So, yung battle cry namin is the power of sharing. Together, let us act now. Sa last January 29 in Manila, we launched this withdraw from coal campaign using the image ng ATM card na nagwi-withdraw ka. So, withdraw from coal. Ito yung parang image dyan, no? So, together with our other partners, kinap-ni-launch namin. And then, in San we are asking everybody join the call to urge our banks to withdraw from coal as a concrete act of love that we can do together for our people and our common home. We have started Ash, Ash Wednesday, the season of Lent last Wednesday already. Sabi na, di ba Ash din yun? <laughs> so it's a very good, uh, rather than we abstain from chocolates, let's abstain from plastic, single-use plastic, let's abstain from mga habits, practices that tends to pollute the environment or destroy the environment. And one concrete act that we can do, kasi sinabi ni Pope Francis, binagdag niya sa seven corporal works of mercy and eight corporal works of mercy, ang pang-eight to care for the common home is a spiritual and corporal work of mercy. Kaya kung hindi ka maka-abstain o makapas for one reason or the other, our efforts to care for the common home, like writing the banks to divest from coal, is a spiritual and corporal work of mercy. No? So magandang lenten discipline din yan. So withdraw from coal ang ating panawagan. Sana samahan niyo kami. Divestment from fossil fuels is simply exerting social, political, and economic pressure for the institutional withdrawal of assets, including stocks, bonds, and other financial instruments connected to the companies involved in extracting fossil fuels. Parang yun ang pinaka-end. Pag ayaw nilang makinig, we will be forced to do that. But meanwhile, we give them the chance because the Skreta nga, she refuses to believe that evil tayo. I mean, lahat naman may desire. Sabi nga nila, we will dialogue with them. May mga anak din kami, Bishop. Yung mga anak kami pag-uwi sa eskulahan, sabi nila, Dad, ano yung, ano nyo, pull, pull down. Dapat hindi tayo magano. So sila mismo, kinukonsensya na sarili nilang mga anak. Sabi nila. So, ito yung mga ecological actions na sinabi namin sa pastoral letter. One of which is divestment of Catholic financial resources from fossil fuels. Na sana samahan niyo kami, suportahan niyo. We have 10 years left. Sabi nga ni Greta, 8 years na lang eh. At kung tingnan mo yung gigatons ng, ng kota natin na wikan, ano, na hindi mag-maintain yung 1.5 degrees centigrade, no? Parang 8 years lang, makakubos na natin yung ating kota. Kaya we have to act fast. We don't have the luxury. So far, in the world, there is this global call for divestment. And in the Philippines, CBCP is one of the signatories. We are seriously trying to do that. The Caritas Philippines, kami sa Diocese of San Carlos, Environmental Science for Social Change, so ngayon nagsimula na rin with Bishop Pabilio, yung Archdiocese of Manila. And other dioceses are, are ano, kasi kinakausap namin yung mga Catholic institutions na may mga share sa mga banks like this. Na sila yung mag, mag, on, the, on the forefront in asking and demanding from this bank to stop funding dirty coal. And Pero hindi natin masabi na wala tayo magawa kasi wala naman tayong shares doon. No. Kasi andun din yung binibigay yun na sa collection, doon din na didiposito sa kanila, to the church, no? Yung binabayad yun sa Catholic schools, nagpapaaral kayo ng mga anak yun sa Catholic school, doon din din yung sa kanila. So in a way, ano kayo doon? So if you can use whatever opportunity that you have to register, 
I think it will make a difference. Sa amin sa San Carlos, as an example lang, sinabihan kami na renewable energy hub kami. Ito yung mga sample ng mga solar farms existing in the city. Well, actually, in the whole in the whole Negros Island, 97% of our installed capacity comes from renewables. 97. And and there are there are 17 renewable energy technologies operating in Negros Island. One of which, of course, ang sa ABC sa geothermal, no? But, of course, the solar farm, the ethanol, the biomass, no? Hydro. Pero, ang, ang irony of it, 70% of our electricity comes from our neighboring coal and diesel power plants. Kasi nakakontrata na ang ating mga distribution utilities. Ang ating mga electric cooperatives 20 years ago, nakakontract na nabibili sa coal power power plant sa Toledo City o doon sa Lapaz, coal power power plant sa Lapaz. Kaya 70% na kinukonsumo namin na electricity ngayon comes from dirty coal. While we are producing 97% renewable energy. That's the problem of the grid. At sinasabi pa rin sa mentality ng ating mga, mga, mga public servants, barato pa rin daw ang coal. Pero tingnan ninyo pag mag-renewable tayo, like solar. Galing sa road, papunta sa bahay mo, wala ka ng transmission cost, wala ka ng distribution cost. So, malaki, ang at later all, kung meron ka ng storage na sinasabi na pwedeng magmura na, o common, kung hindi pwedeng individual, we can even sell or exact our surplus energy to the grid. So, there is hope talaga sa atin sa country for renewable. Ito yung potential ng Negros Island. No? May geothermal, well resource, pwede dito on hydropower, biomass, ocean, and solar. Dahil nga sa effort namin to keep Negros Coal free last March 6, Ash Wednesday last year, nagkaroon kami ng big rally. But before that, young people like you who are here, every Wednesday during the session of the Provincial Council, Board Council, Provincial Board, silent lang, ando sila sa labas, ang mga young people, when they're screamer, declare Negros Coal free. Kaya last March 6, tumabas ang aming governor carrying his executive order declaring Negros Occidental coal free. <laughs> Problema lang, last term niya na. <laughs> An executive order lang yun. Kaya, we were asking the provincial board to issue an ordinance. Natapos lang ang term nila, hindi sila nakatapos ng hearing nila kung i-issue sila ng ordinance or not. Yung bagong governor, who is also from San Carlos, at first, he was saying that he will not, he will, he will not, he will change the EO. Pwede, kasi EO naman yun, kaya ano yun, uh, parang, ano yun, parang time bound, kung baga, depende lang yan kung ipapatuloy niya rin. Nang when we heard him that in interviews of, sa radio or sa media, nagpobilize naman kami and really gave our ano na please respect the EO and let's keep Negros coal free and let's go for renewable energy. Kaya sa inauguration niya nagsabi siya in preparation for his inauguration na hindi niya nagagalawin yung EO and we will just focus on making the, the renewable energy available in the province. So hanggang ngayon, binabantay na lang namin yan kasi baka ma ano, no? So ito yun. Tuloy pa rin yung ating campaign. 
ito yun ang sa San Carlos, ginawa namin last February 2023. Nag ano kami, nag uh, launch din ng withdraw from goal sa Visayas during the Echo Convergence. And ang sinasabi namin na let's keep our hope to keep Negros school free and if possible, the whole Philippines sana mamit natin yung ating nationally agreed contribution or declared contribution para ma-maintain yung 1.1 1 .1 degree centigrade, 0.5 centigrade na uh, kota, ano yun, parang uh, temperature climate. Salamat na wala namang bago so far, amin. And uh, we have a beautiful world na sana pangalagaan natin. Ito yung aming template sa letter, and I will end with this, template ng letter sa BPI. Meron kami pinaserox na copy of this, ilang copy lang, and we are passing it now kung willing kayo magpirma na padala natin sa BPI at ang sinasabi lang natin dito, we write to you as members of the Catholic community, and as depositors, shareholders, borrowers, and stakeholders of your esteemed institution in the spirit of Laudato Si, the encyclical of our beloved Pope Francis, on a matter of gravest concern for saving our common home to address the climate emergency. As a major repository of the resources of the Catholic Church in the Philippines, as a Filipino banking institution for the past 200 years, and as a responsible global corporate citizen, BPI is part of the audience called upon by our church to take action. BPI has led the way in Philippine banking, and now we ask your managers and directors to take the lead once more by being the first Filipino bank to divest itself from coal. Our money as depositors and shareholders are being used to fund coal-fired power plants that produce overpriced electricity while polluting the air and ground, poisoning our people. Let us put a stop to this. The idea of divestment is not radical or impossible. Around the world, many banks and financial institutions have withdrawn funding for coal-fired power plants. They have done so in a way that does not lead to financial losses. We strongly recommend that church investments and deposits be utilized to promote renewable energy instead. We ask you to use our money wisely. We should not put profit ahead of the common good. Without the resources of your bank, funding for these destructive plans will be drastically reduced. With the prestige of BPI, we hope other banks may be convinced to do the same. Kaya, tara na! Permana. Are you willing to sign this letter? Are you ready? Sana na po. Salamat. Ito na yung nakuna na ako. Ha? Sana marami sa inyo ang magpermaid na lahat. Sana all. So, with no from call, for more information, you can visit this uh, Facebook account, withdraw from Paul PH. Maraming maraming salamat po. Magayon.